How many of you have dreams and visions of a grand project playing out over the course of your life? We all do. We all have a dream in some way or form. We all want to find out how one moves from just being to being perfect, or at least close to perfect. There's a quote by Rumi that I absolutely love that says, let yourself be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will never leave you astray. But let's back up a moment. How do we find what we really love? How do we find what this grand project of our life is supposed to be? We read about the Japanese concept of Ikigai, which is our reason for being. And it all sounds wonderful in theory, but, but realistically, how is it that we're supposed to find what we love? My name is Sanjana Chatlani, and I'm a calligraphy artist from Mumbai. And today I'm going to talk to you about my journey, wherein a simple creative outlet and a passion project led me to discover a scalable career path for myself on my own terms. And when I look back now, I was truly able to find what I love by the means of being put at a crossroad. And this entire process of decision making, picking a path, made me realize that we're often thrown into scenarios to really figure out what we truly love and what we truly stand for. And chances are we may find ourselves in a situation with multiple great options to reach one destination. So here I was deciding if I should grab an exciting opportunity to start a calligraphy business or stick to a really solid, perfect corporate job. Let's look at how that unfolded. I had two amazing options in front of me. So two choices, one decision to make. And I want to break this entire process down for us into three stages. So the first stage, the most essential, how do I know that I have arrived at a crossroad? Sounds simple, but maybe you don't even realize it. So how do I acknowledge that I'm at a point where I need to make a choice? How do I know that I need to make a decision between two choices before moving forward? It's easy to be dismissed when the choices to be made are maybe unimportant or one is definitely better than the other. So in this scenario, we don't really need to think too much because clearly there's a better one. But the challenge arises when both choices are equally good. So to me, that, that resistance or that internal battle is a sign of being at a crossroad. So let me tell you a quick story of what is probably my aha moment. I was fresh out of college. I got this great first job with a luxury firm and it was everything I ever dreamt of. I was learning, I was growing, I was interacting with some amazing people in the industry. But my moment of calm at the end of a you know long day at work, my personal solace, if we could say, was to sit down and sketch. I would open my notebook and I'd make you know, sketches of quotes or positive affirmations, words, basically. And this used to be my unwinding process. And somehow, through the course of my daily engagements, I realized that a combination of skillful doodles and a continuously developing sense and love for design led me to start thinking about what could come next. And this was actually at such a subconscious level that I never even realized I enjoyed using letter forms in creative ways. Not in the form of writing or being a writer, but literally in the form of writing words that already existed, beautifying them to create something extremely pleasing to look at. One day I was at the office and I saw this gentleman in our conference room. He was sitting down with a very fancy tool and he was writing away. Here I learned that at every luxury firm, any bit of communication that goes out is done in calligraphy. Now that's because calligraphy shows warmth. It shows a personal touch. And most importantly, it shows effort. Anything done by hand shows effort. 
And this really stuck with me. But apart from that one-off calligraphy class I must have taken in school, I had never thought about this art form in years, let alone the commercial application of it. So I was blown away. I was overcome by this unending curiosity. I began to search online for artists. I stumbled upon a few that I really, really liked. And before I knew it, I was spending every free moment learning and practicing calligraphy online from some of the best teachers in the world. It was calming. It was so meditative. Most importantly, I was loving it. It made me so happy. I started noticing these small changes in myself, you know, my behavior, my temperament, my understanding of attention to detail, because it is such a technical art form in certain senses, and my love for all things design. It was here that my curiosity turned into an obsession that I could not ignore anymore. So by early 2018, I began to take on projects my calligraphy was garnering significant attention. I could see now that it had the potential to blossom into something larger than I could have ever imagined. So by this point, it was almost as though I had two jobs and I was juggling both of them, one through the day and one through the night. I was getting commissioned for more calligraphy work than I could say yes to. There were clients reaching out to me from all over the country from getting personalized calligraphy done for corporates or hand-lettered logos for homegrown brands to even invitations and signages for weddings. It was amazing. And all of this while I still had my full-time job that I thoroughly loved as well. You know, we are paving our path and writing our story consciously or subconsciously. I was. I realized that we must take action we must try different things and we must have an open mind. And this experience for me was all of the above. To the extent that I now began to get a little bit of a nudge, you know, from the inside, a new feeling of what if? What if I could do calligraphy full time? What if I could run my own business? I would laugh at it sometimes and tell myself, how can you build a calligraphy business? That's not realistic, you know, but that feeling didn't go away. And I could tell that there was a mental shift and I was acknowledging the fact that I was probably at an important stage in my life, which was a crossroad. Working full-time and running a side business was incredible, but it wasn't sustainable. I was overworked in the best way possible and finally sat back to pick a lane. I told myself that I have to pick one and now go all out with that one. So by July 2018, I took the plunge and this was probably the hardest decision I've had to make. And now this brings us to my next stage. How did I pick between two great choices? It became clear to me that I had an idea. I had an amazing idea that was truly mine and nobody in India had executed this to the level that I had envisioned a solid ecosystem within the world of Western calligraphy with ample opportunity to expand. My mind was racing. I had several ideas. Now this was both scary yet tremendously exciting. But on the other hand, I had a secure job with one of the largest luxury companies in the world that I absolutely loved. The ideal professional life. My first and most obvious plan was to list down pros and cons. The rational way. So I listed down everything I could think of. But to my surprise, both turned out to be amazing options. Great choices. So how is I supposed to now pick one? How is I supposed to pick the better of the two? I had to really dig deeper to ask myself, okay, where do I see myself 10 years down the line? Or what is it that I truly love? Or, you know, there's a question I like to ask myself that's, What's the worst thing that can happen if I pick the riskier of the two? Now, on a side note, I do believe that I had the courage to pick the riskier of the two because I had certain safety nets, one being age. I was very young and much early on into my career. And on that note, I would like to tell you that if you are at 
a stage in your life where you're just about beginning your professional journey, take that chance. Pick the scarier of the two. Because this time is all about stepping out of our comfort zones, making mistakes, picking ourselves back up and just riding that race. There's so much learning in the mistakes as well. It's exhilarating. So coming back to my decision-making process, I learned that, you know, as we go along, we're going to come across several instances or crossroads in our lives. And we can't really look at a tough choice as a curse. But why don't we try and look at it as an opportunity? An opportunity to explore what we truly stand for and what we're more aligned to. I now look back. And it all just makes sense to me. I've always been creatively inclined. I was an art student in school. And that's also why I left business school in the UK to come back and study media and communication in India at the age of 18. Hardest decision up until this one. But again, I found myself in a situation which was a crossroad and I picked coming back to India. But here's the point of it. Uh, I feel we're made to create reasons to back a difficult decision. And that is a very important life exercise to me now when I look back. And then finally, I spoke to friends, family and mentors for both these decision making times in my life. And I really tried to figure out what the right decision would be. And through this process, it became clear to me that there is no right or wrong. There is no definitive right or wrong decision. It's about making a decision, an intuitive one, in the best capacity possible at that time and then owning that decision and really making it right for yourself. So if you see, my three plans were a little bit of a combination of head, heart and gut. But there was one more parameter that I would like to talk about, which is value. And yes, value is intangible. And both my choices at the point were extremely valuable. But I could say the nature of each were very different. Realized value is subjective. You can only know by doing well or not. So let's talk about my choices. Corporate world, stability, security, great books lots of travel, live abroad, something I loved and wanted to try. Switch off mentally once you're out of your working hours. But you are always going to be working for someone else. Now let's come to creative entrepreneurship or just entrepreneurship. No paycheck coming in every month. Immense pressure to build a business, a successful one. Accountability for everything. You can never switch off, but flexibility, being your own boss, building a life that you want for yourself and experiencing the joy of seeing your ideas just blossom and succeed. That's a whole other adrenaline rush. So different values, different ways of living. It became clear to me that as we go through this internal process, this difficult internal decision-making process, you will begin to favor certain alternatives or choices. Those that do have a higher potential for reaching your goal. And finally, chances are you would prioritize and go ahead with the path that resonates with what you truly want from life. Invariably, Every decision we make is leading us to choose the kind of person we want to be. So finally, let's look at what lies ahead once the decision is made. And this brings us to my third stage, which is life after the crossroad. I've seen a lot of young entrepreneurs and business owners who focus so much on the very fact of starting up that they actually lose sight of sustaining Picking a great option for yourself is just the beginning because it's after the crossroad that your journey truly begins. My decision to quit my job and build a business around calligraphy has been one of the best things that's happened to me in my life. I'm owning that decision 
and I'm living a new life, taking on unique challenges that come my way every day. Funnily enough, I'm at a new micro crossroad in my business today, and I know I encounter several of them. One of them being, should I scale up or should I remain boutique? And I know I'm going to go through this process time and again. I'd also be lying if I'd say that I never question my decision. Because like any business, there are difficult days, especially when you're starting out and we're all human. So there are challenges, unique ones that come our way every day, but it's really embracing them and making the most of them and coming out through them. So what started out in 2017, I had no competition. Imagine how wonderful that was. Uh, It was almost like a monopoly. But today, five years later, there's serious competition with young calligraphers emerging across the country. I could double question myself. I could doubt myself. I could doubt my decision. And it's natural to just second guess ourselves. But that's going to keep happening. And I realized that the core of what we do is always going to pull us back. And something in our day is going to remind us of why we've chosen this path and why we love it so much. As a creative entrepreneur today, I am constantly trying to strike a balance between being an artist and being a business owner because entrepreneurship is new to me. And as an artist or any skill-based professional, we must keep learning, growing and enhancing our skills. Because if we stop growing and stop learning, we're as good as dead. So being able to immerse myself completely into my craft and then step away to be able to look at it from the lens of a business is something I'm actually enjoying. The the duality of roles is what's tremendously valuable for me too. So here I am in year five of my entrepreneurial journey, each day as exciting as it can be, And I'm here to tell you that I did find what I love through the beautiful opportunity of a crossroad. Not a curse, but an opportunity. And on that note, as Einstein said, if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. So I hope you move away. I hope you are encountered with challenging crossroads. And I hope you embrace them thoroughly because there is so much value that comes out of just challenging yourself every now and then and getting a step closer to really understanding what you truly love. Thank you.